Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Sun. The Rays starting staff has been on a roll during the current homestand, allowing just four earned runs. But the bats have gone silent as the home team has dropped three of four. Tonight, right-hander Jake Odorizzi returns from the DL, and the offense looks for a resurgence against struggling starter Rick Porcello and the Red Sox. The Wednesday showdown is driven by GMC. Tonight at Tropicana Field, the Rays will play the middle game of this nine-game homestand. They'll take on the Boston Red Sox in game two of this short two-game set. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to an evening of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats. Great to have you aboard. We'll hear from Alex Cordry as well. The Rays offense has had a difficult time, but their starting pitching continues to be very, very solid, hoping they can get the same as Jake Odorizzi comes off the disabled list tonight. And listen, he had a strained lower back, and it's something that he had been dealing with the vast majority of the season. I'm going to tell you something right now. If that's not feeling very good, the command is going to be a little bit off, and I think that that's what the problem with Jake Odorizzi was. Now he comes back. He's healthy. He says he feels great. We'll be able to tell early when you start to look at the elevated fastball and then, of course, the finish on the split changeup. And if it's there, then you hope for numbers like this. Six career home starts here in Tropicana Field against the Red Sox. Tremendous numbers. Five of the six starts he's given up two earned or fewer, and that's what you're hoping for here again tonight. Keep that starting rotation on a roll. Odorizzi comes off the DL. Rick Porcello, the reigning Cy Young Award winner, is 5 and 14. And what an interesting season it has been for him. The Rays start the night in a virtual tie for the second wild card spot with Kansas City and Seattle. This series also features two of the premier closers in the game. Alex Colome leads the American League in saves. And last night, we saw Greg Kimball of the Red Sox. Alex Cordray takes a look when we come back.
up this quick two-game series. And in many cases, there's nothing more heartbreaking, more infuriating than a blown save. Well, for the Rays and Red Sox, that's not a frequent story, thanks to having two of the best closers in the game. For Tampa Bay's Alex Colomay, he recorded his 33rd save on Thursday in Houston, which is the most in the AL and second in the majors. Dating back to the 2016 All-Star break, he leads the majors with 51 saves. Without any doubt, the Rays are comfortable leaving Colomay in the ninth inning role. And as for Boston's Craig Kimbrell, who struck out the side in a perfect ninth inning Tuesday to record his 28th save of the season. He now has a 1.48 ERA. Kimbrell leads AL relievers in strikeouts and has made four straight scoreless appearances. Both Colomay and Kimbrell are dominant. And as for those last three outs, the Rays manager says they're the most critical outs in a game. Opposing teams would agree that they're not very fun at bats. You'd rather not see them in the game. I mean, because when they're in the game, most more times than not, it's the, the, they have a lead and they're not going to give that lead up. For us, Alex, I mean, you know what you're going to get. Um, he's going to throw strikes and he's going to get guys, you know, out. That's why he's the closer. But that's the confidence we have in him. And Kimbrel, um, you know, he's been around for so long. Um, he's still doing the same thing and. Uh, you know, that's hurt, that hurts hitters' confidence. And, uh, you know, you just got to go up there and, and battle. The Rays and Red Sox about to close the door on this two-game series. And Tampa Bay has already handed Boston's Rick Porcello three losses this season. Can the ball club do it again tonight? Rays baseball swinging your way next right here on Fox Sports Sun. Dakota Rizzi will go to the hill for the Rays who start the night now. A half game back of Seattle. The Mariners have just beaten the A's in Oakland 6 to 3. So with 48 games left to play in this regular season. Rays down by a half game from that second wild card spot. Quick look at the starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Nunez, Benintendi and Betts top three. Ramirez, Moreland, and Bogarts down the middle. Holt, Leon, and Bradley Jr. rounding out the Red Sox lineup. First pitch 
of this game is a strike call from Jay Cota Rizzi. So we are underway. Nunez yeah, a 323 average over the, all this year. And we'll take a look at the numbers on Oda Rizzi. A six and four record ERA 4.47 last start in the big leagues that was back on July the 23rd so been two and a half weeks for Jake. Foul ball straight back. Nunez has been very hot since coming to the Red Sox. You see eight home runs overall four of those with Boston to go with a 422 average in a Red Sox uniform in the first dozen games he's played with this team. Is up and it's two and two. Well, getting an opportunity tonight to play down there at third base. Been a trouble spot for the Red Sox all season long. That's why they go out and they make the deal. And he has been absolutely sensational. The change of scenery doing him and the Red Sox a lot of good. And he starts this one with a base hit to right. He started last night's game with a double into the right field corner. Goes the other way and is aboard with a single tonight. He used the entire field last night. You're right. Up the right field line, then went up the middle. He stays inside this elevated fastball and doesn't try to do too much with it. Stay inside of it, pull the hands through, let that ball get into the zone, and then shoot it out the other way. That is a hitter that is locked in right now. Runner aboard for the left fielder. Andrew Benintendi. And there's a strike. The upper part of the zone. Fastball. Benintendi, another hitter here in the month of August, swinging the bat very well. The Red Sox on a seven game winning streak. They're scoring some runs. Yeah, they're averaging six runs a game. And that seven game winning streak. And when you put their uh, team ERA together, the best in the league, that has been the winning combination for John Farrell. He's got the number one bullpen. Starters are getting the job done. You're scoring runs. I mean, yeah, that's exactly how you put together a winning streak. And they've started to separate themselves in the AL East. But tonight's game for the Rays is so important. Austin starting the day four up on New York six and a half in front of the Rays. If it's taken too high fastball up there and it's one and one. Yeah, there's that separation that we're talking about. I mean Baltimore closer to Tampa Bay than the Rays are to the Yankees How about that. Pitch is wide. And now it's two and one. The Orioles started the day a game under 500. On the scoreboard watch. They have dropped their game now to the Angels five to one. So they're two games under 500. Runner on the move. Pitch is fouled straight back into the screen. Boy, Nunez had it. He had a great jump, full head of steam. And Ben Intendi fouls that pitch off and he heads back to first base. This team will run. Yeah, they're third in the league in stolen bases. And Nunez on the year. Very good. You saw his overall numbers there, and he's three of three running since coming to the Red Sox. Upstairs. Fastball rushed to the plate by Oda Rizzi. Yeah. A man in motion will do that to you. You start to think about that runner over at first base. You try to speed up that delivery just a hair towards home plate, and all of a sudden everything rushed. And you can't get the ball where you need to. And that's what we're going to look for here early on with Jake Odorizzi is command. Command of the fastball, finish on the split change. 3 2. There goes Nunez, and the pitch is fouled back. See the fastball and 
All of those up. Well, let's take a minute here. Let's look at the Rays defense brought to you by Golden Diamond Source. In that outfield left to right, Dickerson, Smith, and Sousa Jr. Across that infield, third to first, Longoria, Echeverria, Miller, and Trevor Plouffe over at first base with Wilson Ramos back behind the plate. Three two and it's shot fair. That ball hits Pat Holberg at third and the Rays get a break there. Wow. That was an extra base hit to be sure. Nunez has to stop at second on what turns out to be a base hit for Benintendi. That's the second time that we've seen that here at Tropicana Field uh, not that long ago. Ball sliced just inside right over top of the bag and Pat Holberg gets caught flat footed and that ball hits him. That, that gets down into the corner and you're talking about runners on second and third. Yeah and I think uh, Kevin Cash wants the umpires to confer on that to see if it was fair when it went over the bag. It certainly and that's the question I think is on his mind. Yeah I, that could be the only thing and this gives you a pretty good look it is at an angle but this ball hits and looks like it bounces right over top of the bag. Obviously at that point starting to slice a little bit but it catches Holberg and the Rays catch a break. Two men on with nobody out and here's Mookie Betts. Hitting 391 with men in scoring position. Second best in the league. Rizzi misses on the first pitch to him. High fly ball right field. Steven Susie Jr. a bit toward the corner making the catch. He'll turn fire to second. Nunez tags and goes to third. It will be first and third with one out now. Is he trying to get his feet under him here right off the disabled list and in a first inning jam. Well, you tell yourself it could have been a lot worse. You still have the opportunity with that fly ball right there. A ball on the ground. Jake does not get a ton of balls on the ground but this would be the time that you start to think about a breaking ball a cutter a change up something to get that ground ball maybe get a double play and get out of this inning. He's thrown four double play balls this year. In 18 starts, but this would be, you're right, a great time for it. And interestingly enough, Ramirez, for his power, he hits the ball on the ground a lot. Yes, he does. Runner takes off, and the pitch is inside. Throw down, and he is safe at second, going in head first to the outside of the bag. So Ben Intendi picks up his 14th stolen base. Boy, Ben Intendi, a great jump right there. A good lead, not a great lead, but a great jump. And he gets in there easily. He is now in the month of August, and we're August 9. He's five for five this month in stolen bases. So not only swinging the bat well, but running the bases well, too. Myers takes this pitch down. Big first inning threat. That's a strike. Ramirez is not happy with the call. You have a tendency, if you put any stock into Fox tracks, to kind of believe him. A two seamer running in. You see that ball. Maybe in a little bit off the plate. Sometimes that happens. Chopper down to third. There will be a play at the plate. Out. Nunez trying to score. 
tagged by Ramos. Longoria taking that chopper and going right to the plate with the throw to cut down the potential run. Boy, it, you know, it, I'll tell you, every team now goes on contact. And Evan Longoria kind of has to rush that throw, actually bounces it. A great job back there by Ramos to scoop and tag that ball into the dirt. He controls it, gets that left leg in front of the plate, and puts the tag on. And you are one hitter away from getting out of this rough beginning of the inning. Well, Mitch Moreland, he was one for four last night. Hitting 242, 50 runs batted in. And there's a strike on the outside corner. Moreland coming over from Texas this year. 22 home runs for Texas got off to a very fast start with Boston and has evened out a bit one and one the count boy during that month of April he was a doubles machine leading the league along the way and intended third Ramirez first the one one. Moreland could not catch up up there and it's one and two. How effective can Jake Odorizzi be with that pitch that will go a long way in dictating how effective he is over the course of his outing. Elevated fastball very important to Jake. Jake already over 20 pitches in this inning so he's right into this game. Averaging just under 18 and a half pitches per inning this year. And away. Two and two. Yeah, that that 18 and a half. That's career high for Jake. And and he has talked about being trying to become more efficient so that he can get deeper into ball games. But 18 and a half pitches per inning will go a long way in not allowing that to happen. The pitch count just builds up too soon, and they've got to get you out. Foul. That's going to be out of play. Back of third holding the count at 2 2. Well, the Rays have had a great run here in this stretch from their starting pitchers on this homestand, beginning with Ferrio, one run, six innings. Cobb the next night, six innings, one run. Archer the next night, a run, six innings. Last night, Pruitt, six innings and a run. Two, two again and the count's going to be full. Yeah the only problem with that run is in three of those four games the Rays scored zero runs. That's exactly right. And, and that's what really hurts. You get that kind of starting pitching and get basically nothing to show for it. Full count here it is. And the tapper foul. Well, here they are, the Rays one and three getting that great starting pitching through four games, but only two runs scored, and the team hitting 177 and 0 for 20 with men in scoring position during that stretch. And when you have a one and three stretch and your starters are throwing up a one and a half. Three, two, and a shot right back. Caught. By Yoda Rizzi. A hot shot liner right back at Jake, who grabbed it. Red Sox threatened, they lead two. And when we go to the bottom of the first, Corey Dickerson will be the leadoff hitter for the Rays tonight against Rick Porcello.
It will be Rick Porcello making his 24th start of the year for Boston. And the Rays will line him up this way against him. Presented by your Southern Ford dealers, Corey Dickerson at the top of the lineup, followed by Brad Miller, then Evan Longoria. Logan Morrison will hit clean up the DH. Steven Susie Jr., fifth, and Trevor Ploof in there at first. Wilson Ramos will catch Malik Smith in center field, hits eighth, and Adani Echeverria at shortstop. Well, what a turn of fortunes for Rick Porcello here in 2017, getting ready to make his 24th start of the season. A complete flip of what he did a year ago in winning the Cy Young 2016, a 5 and 14 record, ERA 4.700 ERA. He has given the Red Sox innings 145 and two thirds, but it has not been the kind of season that you envisioned from the reigning Cy Young Award winner. Well, Corey Dickerson starts the night hitting 296 and he takes the first pitch down. Twenty one home runs for Dickerson this year. There's a strike says Tony Randazzo. Fastball and he got it by him. A little power that by him, and we're seeing more and more of that this season from Rick Porcello. More of the four seam fastball as opposed to the two seam fastball, something that made him a very good ground ball pitcher. Not nearly the same type of guy he was just a few seasons ago. Yeah, that's an interesting transition by him. The foul ball out of play. Given up 26 home runs this year. And the home run we mentioned that Dickerson has off Porcello. That's the ball that Dickerson, I think, hit to center field over the wall at Fenway. Swing and a miss, and Dickerson is out on strikes. Able to climb that ladder with 93. The fastball got better as he had that went on. Let's take a look at the Boston defense brought to you by Golden Diamond Source. In the outfield, left to right, we've got Ben Intendi, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Mookie Betts across the infield, third to first. Nunez, Bogarts, Holt, and Moreland. Sandy Leone back behind the plate. Now, here is Brad Miller fouling it back. Strike one. Miller originally was down in the lineup. The Rays' original lineup had Lucas Duda up in the number two spot, and Miller hitting down in the lineup. And Duda with a, a bad thumb had to be scratched, and so Miller was placed up in the second spot, which might not be a bad thing. He has four career home runs against Porcello. So get him up there early and often. I try, you try to maximize the at-bats. And it's a shame that Lucas Duda had to come out of this lineup because he's been very good for the Rays. But Brad Miller and his history, you just hope that that can repeat itself. There's a well-hit ball to left. Ben Intendi's going to watch it sail over his head. One hop the wall, and Miller's on his way to second with a double. So up there in the number two spot, he comes up with a two-base hit. And once again, you get Rick Porcello elevating and elevating more of his game than it's ever been before. And it has really cost him big time this season. See, he tries to go up with that heater away, doesn't quite get it there. That's been the issue. He cannot consistently climb the ladder and get those pitches where he wants to. But like I said, he's, he's kind of reinventing himself. Or maybe he's just that leery of using the sinker because the command of that pitch hasn't been very good. Now Evan Longoria pitches down. So the Rays with a first inning scoring opportunity. Evan 269 for the year but a little over 300 with men in scoring position. 
if it's blocked, rolls in behind Leon, but no chance for a move up on it. Two and zero. Boy, he did just enough right there to keep Brad Miller at second base. I feel like he gets over to third with just one out. He got a great chance to get him in, or an easier opportunity to get him in. But Evans also sitting here in a 2-0 count against a guy who eventually is going to come out over the plate. It's 3 and 0. Logan Morrison on deck. Three and one. And there's ball four. He was careful with Longoria, walked him on the pitch down, but it puts two men on for Logan Morrison. Morrison a pretty good history against Marcelo as well. Logan sixth in the league and home runs with 28. A career home run 10 of 31 against Porcello. Side. Nunez will go to second. They get the force on Longoria. The ball not hit very hard. So Miller goes to third and Morrison reaches. You know, I thought Eduardo Nunez was going to come up there and feed that ball to second right away in the attempt to turn the double play. And Brock Holt, the problem was Brock Holt wasn't there yet. So he had to double clutch here. Ball hit inside out, hit slowly. He comes up to throw. Nope, not there. Now he feeds Brock Holt coming across the bag, and they just do get Evan Longoria. Well, now Steven Souza Jr. Takes a pitch down. So the Rays threatened. Red Sox threatened, did not score in the top of the first. First and third, two outs for the Rays in the bottom of the inning. Too wide. Two and nothing. These are the types of counts that Rick Porcello has got to try to stay out of. Rays, you know, he's one of the one of the best in baseball. First pitch strike percentage. But boy, if he starts to fall behind, that's when the hitting gets pretty good. Finds his own there. Two and one. Steven Susie Jr. up here with a chance to give the Rays an early lead. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. Two and two. And he got two fastballs. The, the first one more hittable. And then this one here, this is just a pitcher's pitch in a 2 1 count. Go right to the edge. And now you're right back in it. Two two and a swing and just a little piece of that one or is it a swing and a miss swing and a miss tagged out and Susan Junior out on strikes the Rays lead to no score through one.
Baseball on Fox Sports Sun brought to you by your local Ford dealers. By GMC, we are professional grade. And by your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. Braves continuing the homestand. Red Sox in here for two games. This night a two to nothing Boston win. Tonight no score as we go into the second with Jay Goderizzi just off the disabled list. We'll face Xander Bogarts to begin the second. Pitch is upstairs. So both teams leaving two men aboard in the first inning. That's a strength. And now that one darting away from him, down and away, and a cut in the miss, one and two. Fouls it. Brock Holt is on deck, then Sandy Leon. Two balls, two strikes. Working out of the stretch. It's popped up and fouled straight back and off the facing of the upper deck. Holding the count at two and two. That foul ball rate is also something that is a significant part of Oda Rizzi's game. A lot of foul balls to extend his pitch count. Now a full count. Yeah, the, that that'll run it up quicker than anything. Those the long at bats. You know, he jumped out, got the was way out ahead of Bogarts, and then all of a sudden, the elevated fastball fouled off, fouled off. You take a pitch out of the zone, you foul another one off, and before you know it, you're running up a seven, eight, nine pitch AB. Third full count here, and there's another foul ball straight back. Six hitters and three full counts already. Yep. And already, you know, approaching mid 30s in pitches, total pitches. And a 26 pitch first inning. And a little number, that ball rolling up the right side and is foul. Extended it bad by Bogarts. The Rays and the Red Sox tonight meet for the 13th time this year. And they've divided 12 games right down the middle, six and six. Three and two for the Rays here at home against Boston. And it's finally popped up fair. Ploof is there to make the catch. I'll tell you what, Ten Jake, pitch inning. Yeah, Jake Odorizzi, it took him a while to finally get there, but in no way did Xander Bogarts threaten him at all during that at bat. Moving the ball around the zone, got him to jump back on strike one, chase strike two, some weak foul balls, and then finally jams him there. In a perfect world, you like to do that in four or five pitches, not ten. <laughs> well, here's Brock Holt playing second base. Pitch is a strike. Holt has spent a lot of time on the shelf this year. The tamper foul runs a count to nothing and two. Good 
Pedroia getting the night off. He was just activated. It was the DH last night. Pedroia had a problem with his left knee inflammation in there, and he was on the DL. High popper, short left, and Dickerson makes the catch. So two gone. With the bases empty, the catcher Sandy Leon, a switch hitting catcher. Two forty average overall, six home runs, five of those from the left side against righties. He's after the first pitch, fouling that away. One ball, one strike. Nobody on, two outs, a 2 1 count. When Jake Odorizzi trying to get Sandy Leone as quickly as he can, try to mitigate that 10 pitch at bat that he had against Bogarts. And he's behind Leone, three and one. With that fastball elevated, right now not quite able to get it to the spot he wants, and these Boston hitters able to lay off some of them too. Right back into the screen, and another full count. Some of them, not all. Of them. Getting time granted by Tony Randazzo. And here's a foul ball again. Well, the pitch counts up to 45. One more time, just a little bit of that one. And again, a foul ball behind the third base dugout. So this turns out to be an extended at bat. Yeah, these had up. I mean, these had up in a big way. It's early in the in the game here. And Odorizzi approaching 50 pitches, another long at bat. And if you look at the cluster of pitches on, on Fox tracks, you can see him continually trying to work that fastball up in the zone. And he walks Leon. So out of all of that, a base on balls is the result. A nine pitch at bat there. Yeah, and what this ends up doing, unless they can retire Sandy Leone on the base pass, Jackie Bradley Jr., regardless of what happens, you're at the very minimum, Boston's going to have flipped the lineup to start out in the third inning. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's a, it's a double edged sword compounded here by all of these pitches because you turn the lineup over. Not only do you do that, but it's a lineup that has seen a lot of pitches the first time through. There's ball one that just and it builds the comfort level is what it does. I mean they've got a good idea about Jake Odorizzi anyway but certainly I mean on the night that he's going to pitch you can see that many pitches the first time through huge benefit to you. There is a breaking ball there and it's down two and oh. So a little different look there. But low for a ball. Right now, trying to find anything. It's been a lot of the fastball, occasional changeup early on. 
seen a couple of the, the sliders slash cutter. That's foul. Just outside first. Two and one now. Miss. It's a challenge with a fastball up. Two and two. Well, he's equaled his first inning pitch count and will go beyond it with this pitch. Popped up. Foul ball, and that will carry out a play. Two, just a little piece of it. He fouls it, forcing another one. This is taking the extended and long at bats to a new level. We see that a lot from Jake, but boy, this this 54 about to make his 55th pitch, not yet out of the second inning. And oh, by the way, Boston not on the board. And a cut and a miss. He strikes out Bradley Jr. Picking up his first strikeout. Walk and a man left. And a lot of pitches. No score through an inning and a half. No score. We got to the bottom of the second inning. Rays fans, you can win an opportunity to go on a shopping spree with a Rays player. The Pepsi Shop with a Player contest provides one lucky fan with a Walmart gift card and the chance to spend it shopping with a Rays player. Enter the Pepsi Shop with a Rays player contest at enterpromo.com/splitter. A strike to Ploof. O2. Ploof in here at first base, a late addition to the lineup when Lucas Duda was scratched. And 
Ploof is out on strikes. So three pitches and then strikeout number three for Porcello already. Well, he takes that fastball away, a little bit of elevation, gets it right over the swing of Trevor Ploof. Quick work made by Rick Porcello. Now Wilson Ramos. Rays threatened in the first, but did not score, leaving men at first and third. And a fastball at the top of the zone. And yeah, that's the other thing, Rick Porcello, is he has tried to come out and settle into a game the first time through the order has been the worst time through the order for him. And that's something that the Rays have been very good at. A little popper. The first caught by Moreland was a pitch that came in on him. Yep. Now, you know, you set up a hitter for that. You, you go away, and then all of a sudden, you, you run one right back in there. Hitter's swing, if you notice on tape, you notice in studying a hitter that his swing is getting a little bit long, then you know that that's an area that you're going to try to exploit because if the swing's long, you just cannot get there. It's got to be short, you got to pull those hands through. Nobody on with two outs from Alex Smith. Nunez in a few steps at third, and there's a bunt attempt by Smith. Foul. That's like I went home this summer, and my son had come back from a broken finger. And I'm watching him swing, and I'm like, hey, buddy, do me a favor. The, the donut, you guys have one of those weight donuts? Yeah, yeah, Dad. Well, you can take that off when you actually get in the batter's box. <laughs> Because that, that swing is just for God's sake. How big and long can it get? And when the pitcher's out there and knows what he's doing with a swing like that, you're going to eat it alive. Tough love. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and one of my kids don't want me to come home very often. <laughs> Look out, ball left side glove there by Bogarts, the shortstop. And it's a 1 2 3 bottom of the second inning. Don't worry, Dad won't be home for a while. <laughs> no score through two. <laughs>
in all of Major League Baseball coming in with an ERA of 2.88. And I'll tell you what, the last five games for the Red Sox, the bullpen's thrown 15 scoreless innings. So, not much to say besides that. Well, the top of the order beginning the third inning, and the pitch is up. So, 55 pitches through the first two innings for Jake Odorizzi, and 15 pitches fouled away. It's a strike, and it's one and one. And intending next, followed by Betts. Pitch is up. You can see Nunez start to short. I'll tell you if you're a fan, a young fan, you're looking for a souvenir baseball. The night. Jake Odorizzi pitches could be the night with all these foul balls. Why not? A lot of foul balls over the screen, back into the stands. I think that, Dwayne, I think, quite frankly, that, that could be a great giveaway item next year. The Jake Odorizzi foul ball. You take a baseball, you give it that same texture mm -hmm. and look of a game used ball, and you put it like a, a, a blue smudge. Where where the ball got you know yeah and maybe with his autograph stamped on it why not yeah and and that's a giveaway item hot shot line to third and Evan Longoria is right there to make the catch for the first out oh. you're thinking outside the box nice going well listen we we know that the Rays come up with some very they have some unique. of the best of all time yes year after year so why not throw that one in the hopper. Mm -hmm. Andrew Benintendi. It's a good idea, I think. Just off the beaten path enough to be very interesting. And then you would have to, you'd have to give it away to the first 15,000 fans. Oh. Right. There's a strike to Benintendi. And then there, you'd have to have an over/under on number of foul balls during the course of a season. Mm -hmm. What would be more? Foul ball there. 0-2. I can't look at you right now. <laughs> I understand. One out. Base is empty. Two strikes to count to Benintendi. And Odorizzi delivers and a high fly ball back into left. Dickerson's going to go all the way to the wall. Has it and cannot come up with it just over his head. Smith will play what turns out to be the carom. Boy, for a moment it appeared that Dickerson might actually catch that ball. He went all the way to the wall. You know what happened, Dwayne? I think that, that Dickerson, Corey Dickerson, got caught drifting. Instead of getting back to the wall and being able to make the catch, he drifts, he drifts, he drifts, and then when the glove goes up, he comes into contact with the wall at about the same time. A deep fly ball high. And look at he's trying to get a read, trying to get a read, and then everything happens at once. Make contact with the wall, the glove make, makes contact with the wall and the baseball. And it just never comes in. And even if that ball would have been caught right there, it hit the wall first. So it's a double for Ben Intendi. First pitch strike to Betts now. Take another look. This is a great shot right here. Boy, everything makes contact. And when it does, everything, the rhythm of the potential catch gets thrown off. I think the fact that, that you alluded to that he was still going back really prevented a leap. Yeah. But if you get back there and leap, you got a shot to make the catch. Easy for me to say. But <laughs> yeah, well, you know what though? But you're right. And I, if they hit it again right now, Corey Dickerson make that catch. Mm -hmm. He make that catch. He just got caught, like you said, you're moving back and all of a sudden you reach up, you get caught, you know, bouncing into the wall. I, I was part of a team. The, the 1999 Diamondbacks and we ended up losing a playoff series uh, against the New York Mets on a Todd Pratt homer to center where Steve Finley went back to the wall and it's a catch that he'll make 99 times yeah, out of 100. You're talking about a great center fielder great there. center fielder and he jumped but he jumped with a little bit of an angle and his shoulder caught the wall and threw everything off and the ball dropped over on the other side and that's the end of the series and so 
Boy, you, you mistime your jump, jump at the wrong angle, or get caught into that wall, it will throw off the play. So three and one to Betts, following the double by Benintendi, his 17th double. And ball four outside. So two men on with one out. Well, two men on, one out, and the cleanup man, the designated hitter, Hanley Ramirez, is coming up. The walk follows the double. Three hits, a couple of walks in the game, and now here's Ramirez. And he shoots this one deep, right center field. Susan's there, and he makes the catch. And a throw back to the infield with the runners returning to first and second. Ramirez hit that ball very well. And Sousa Jr. got over there to run it down and make the grab. Boy, that appeared to be trouble off the bat. The ball just did not have the carry. Well, there's the cutting action, and that cutting action takes it towards the end of the bat. If that ball doesn't cut as much as it did, and it wasn't that much, that ball's probably gone. But it gets more off the end of the bat. That allows Sousa Jr. a shot at getting there. He did just that. Nice job by Malik Smith to hit the deck. And Benintendi had to scramble back to second base. Now here's Mitch Moreland. Pitch is off the plate. Moreland lined the ball right back to Oda Rizzi on a 3 2 pitch to end the first with Boston runners at first and third. They have been at first and second here in the third. And a ground ball back to first. Great stop, Blue. And now the ball dropped by Oda Rizzi, and the run is going to score. Blue battling to grab it, finally did. Ball was there in time at first, but Odorizzi couldn't handle it. The inning is over. If either Kluth or Odorizzi handle it flawlessly, and Benintendi scores to make it 1 0. Well, take as much time as you need here to clear the head because this was the end of the inning. A great job by Kluth with the shift on. He's able to cover up the line. Right there, drops the ball, still gets the flip off, but it's a little bit wide. Jake. Has to then stretch for it. Look, everything looked to be in order here. And then the ball pops loose. Recovery. There's the flip. Jake goes out and right off the thumb of the glove. Oda Rizzi charged with his second error of the year. And now there goes Betts and he stops. And a big jump and then stopped on ball one. So the run scores essentially on the error. And the Red Sox have taken a one nothing lead. And there's a pitch popping away from Ramos. No advance and it's two and oh you know the ironic thing about that the Rays spent an extended time here before the game tonight working on all kinds of infield fundamentals. With a pitcher involved on plays, and here you go. The first run of the game scored when the Rays could not execute that after that great stop by Plouffe at first. Two and all the count. Skyed up the right side, Souza. Full head of steam, foul territory, and he makes the catch and sits down on the bullpen bench. Bogarts retired on that pop fly down the right field side. Boston comes up with a run as a result of the error, a hit and a walk in the inning as well. 
and we go to the bottom of the third, one nothing Boston. Well, we know the Tampa Bay has the best dressed team on the field, and Sunday night we had a chance to check out their style off of it. The Rays Wives and the Children's Dream Fund teamed up for the 11th annual Rays on the Runway. Players and their significant others strutting their stuff on the runway with some of the dream children, and the event raised over $110,000. Dwayne, it was pretty cool. Steven Souza Jr. surprised the audience at the end and auctioned off his walk-off home run bat from earlier in the day. Well, what a great night and for such a great cause and uh, a lot of fun. Youngsters are really enjoying that and raising a lot of money as well. The Dainty Echeverria leading off with a count of ball and a strike. Dickerson and then Miller. The liner into left, but Ben Intendi is right there reaching up just above the bill of his cap to make the catch. Still a line drive, but right at the left fielder off the bat of Echeverria. Dickerson top of the order for the Rays. Fastball is found right back up in the zone. Strike one. Dickerson struck out his first time. Rays had a couple of men on and left him off board in the first. Right back to the elevated heater. He got him with a fastball, outer part of the plate, up in the zone, right around the letters last time up. Just changed his eye level, slowed him down with the curveball, down, see if he tries to pop back up and away with that heater. That's what they're going with. Vine drive, and this one right at Nunez, who was well off the bag, shaded toward the hole, and the ball hit right to him. He saw Corey Dickerson there change the swing. You know, didn't take the big swing because if you do that, you're not going to be able to get to that pitch. So he shortened things, did the right thing, hit the ball hard, nothing to show for it. You know, that shows the fine tuning of a defensive alignment right there. 
pitch is a strike to Miller. You know how you're trying to work Dickerson, and if he makes the adjustment to take that pitch and hit it hard the other way, you got a guy right there. Yeah, because more than likely, if he hits it the other way, it's going to be in the shortstop area yep. as opposed to up the line. So what are you going to play your third baseman there for? Mm -hmm. If he does hit it up the line, like if Brad Miller goes up the line here, okay. But the odds say it's a lot more likely that he goes the other way and hits the ball in that general area than right down the line, kind of like Ben Intendi did off of Hobart. And yeah, maybe, that was a great play. Holberg made a great play for the Rays defense. Then. Right now, the the in the clubhouse, Pat Holberg leading MVP yep. of the team here tonight. Because if that ball doesn't hit him, either there's a run in with a runner on second, or there's second and third and nobody out. Tapper, that'll be foul. Evens the count at two-two. So the Rays have managed really through the first two and a half innings. Now we're down to two outs in the third. To stay right in this game, one nothing, and things could be a lot different. They could be a lot different. You think about some of the balls hit hard. That ball off the end of the bat, or closer to the end of the bat, from Hanley Ramirez. It looked like it was bound to get into the gap. There's strike three called, and Miller disagrees. One, two, three, go the Rays. On to the fourth, one nothing, Boston. The Cleveland afternoon baseball against the Colorado Rockies. One out in the ninth inning, and Jonathan Lucroy goes the other way off Cody Allen. That's going to tie the game and force extras. And then in the top of the 12th, off of McAllister, Charlie Blackman with a blast to straightaway center field deep. And then how about this? Bottom of the 12th, Trevor Story. Get around that baseball and make a heck of a throw right there to get Jose Ramirez in first base, and the Rockies would go on to win that ball game. They'll head. Well, I don't know where they're headed. I know that the Indians are on their way here because they're going to play the Rays for the next four days here at Tropicana Field. Well, on to the fourth we go in this one. Here's Brock Holt. There's a strike Holt, Leon, and then Bradley Jr. I was going to send the Rockies right back to Denver, mm -hmm. but it could be a continuation of a road trip. The shot to right. Seems a junior is right there, a little hop as he got to the track and makes that catch. One away. Yeah, you don't want to get into the business of being the schedule maker because you'd be nobody's friend then. Yeah, no. They say that the schedule maker never travels their own schedule. No, and, and, and we hear these horror stories, not horror stories, but you get these different trips that teams take you know the Rays you'll come up with a couple and look at the schedule and say really well, how does that make any sense. But well I'll tell you one that uh, the Rays and, and nobody's really said this to their credit. But when you look at that Houston series and they played a night game. 
on that Thursday night. Yeah. And then flew home and played Friday here. No, that should not happen. To right. any team. No. I, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I, and you think, well, it's not going to have a lasting effect. But I think when you have a team that, that gets in Friday morning at 4 o'clock or so, and for a, a lot of them, by the time they get to bed, that ball is going to be out of play. It's 5 or 6 o'clock, and then you're back trying to hit a 95 mile per hour fastball or a really crisp slider. That will affect your offense. And that's where all of this really started with the Rays. The offensive blackout started then. And I think, hey, play a day game on Thursday. Come home, give yourself a little chance to recover, and then you know, play four, five, six, seven games in a row. Fine. Yeah, that, I, I don't understand that Rick. at all either. You're at the very end of an eight game, two city road trip, yeah. and you play four straight night games in Houston. Now, you want to follow that up with an off day? Okay, you can even do that, mm -hmm. but not a ball game the next night. And you're right, the team did look tired that Friday night against the Brewers. Yeah. Leon loops it into left, and that'll be caught by Dickerson. And the team's credit, no one from the clubhouse to the front office coaching said no one has said one thing about that which is to their credit but, but I I do think it has an effect now other teams I'm sure have to do that at some point or another oh, yeah. but I think just for the uh, quality of the product that you have you want to avoid that so play the Thursday afternoon game and be rested both teams and ready to go Friday night and you know, hopefully that that something as the seasons move forward and the schedules come out that you see more of that mm -hmm. you know the middle of the week getaway should be a day game you know Sundays for the most part unless you're in the national game they're going to be day games and you move on in the same way with that Wednesday or Thursday yeah. play at nooner you know one o'clock whatever just like today with the Indians the Indians and the Rockets one and two now here to Bradley. Yeah, I think that's something that uh, would be worth looking at just for the uh, the quality of the product on the field. Cut the miss and Bradley out on strikes for the second straight time. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It is one nothing Boston. The lead as we go into the bottom of the fourth. Our Toyota inside look this year to 
last. Boy, what a great season. A Cy Young Award season. 22 and 4, 5 and 14 this year. And the ERA has gone from 315 to 470. And already more home runs, the opponent's average, you know, all, really across the board, all of the different statistics. And for Rick Porcello, the command has not been the same. Specifically, the command and usage of the two seamer has not been the same. And that has led to more elevated pitches that have been hit hard and in the air. And we know, listen, last year, Evan Longoria, career high fly ball rate, career high home runs. This season, Rick Porcello, career high fly ball rate as a pitcher. Well, guess what? Career high in home runs given up. A high fly ball towering into center, but not all that deep. Randley Jr. makes the catch. Well, you would certainly think that in an era when everybody's trying to lift the ball, that a guy who can be effective down would stay with that. One would think. I, I mean, really, uh, Rick Porcello had one of the best ground ball rates, best sinkers. You know, and if, if every now and then you know you wanted to climb the ladder and, and change a guy's eye level, you have that ability to do that. But for whatever reason, he has abandoned that style of pitching that we were so accustomed to seeing. I, I can remember him throwing a, a complete game shutout here at Tropicana Field. In fact, Dwayne, I think we talk about this every time he pitches here. That's when you and I broadcast from the porch mm -hmm. out there. And when he was with the Detroit Tigers, threw an absolute gem of a game, and he was heavy sinker guy then. Yeah, it's a, I don't know if it's a total transformation, but pretty close to it. Well, he has gone from a ground ball percentage that got up over 60% at times during the course of his career to coming into play today was below 40. Yeah. That, you're getting into, you're a fly ball guy now. Pretty drastic. When teams are trying to get their hitters with any power to get the ball airborne. This one is popped up. Foul ball. And Leon out from back of the plate. Porcello went alongside. But it's Leon down the third base line making the catch. So two outs. Now the Rays put Miller on with one out in the first, got a double, then the walk to Longoria. And nothing doing since then for the Rays. Steven Souza Jr. So the Rays had two at bats with men in scoring position in the first and did not come through there. So the Rays in this homestand now what, 0 for 22 with runners in scoring position. And if you back it up, before they stand, they're 0 for 26. The popper into right. And that's out number three. We go to the fifth inning. One nothing Boston.
The Knights Geico great moment on this day in 2011. James Shields tosses his fourth complete game shutout of the season. Took him just an hour and 53 minutes. The shortest nine inning game in Rays franchise history. As the Rays went on to advance to the postseason for the third time in the span of four years. Beginning in 08. We go to the fifth. Top of the order for Boston. Rizzi in the mid 80s now in pitch count. And he faces Nunez to begin the fifth. The pitch is a bit wide. A ball, no strikes. Nunez single to open this game. One ball, one strike. Dan Jennings. Gets up in the bullpen just by way of comparison. Porcello has made 46 pitches through four innings. Odorizzi was making his 46th pitch two outs into the second inning in the middle of the Sandy Leon bat. Two and one now. Good intending next and then bets. So a lot of pitches tonight. For Odorizzi, 26 in the first, 29 in the second inning. He's coming off the disabled list. Two and two. He was on earlier this year with a hamstring situation, and then the back issue put him on the DL most recently. And this one. Hits Odorizzi and down he goes. Oh. That ball ricochets back to Ramos and is picked up. And Jake face down on the mound. Oh, you could hear that. And as he tries to get up on his feet again. My just off the DL and then that shot off his foot. And I'll tell you by the way it sounded you were hoping that it hit the shoe but I think it hit above the shoe. But we'll see. Mm. And that does not look good at all. No. Nope. It's nope. terrible to see. That it hit him so square. Yep. That makes you sick. So at this point, you can hope for the best. Oh boy, that does not look good. Yep. The outside of that right ankle. Yep. Mm. And, and it did catch some shoe, but it it, it doesn't matter. So Jake Odorizzi departs after being hit by a line drive outside the right ankle. We'll take a break and be back in a moment.
Dan Jennings will take over on the mound. Jay Goderizzi hit on the outside of the right ankle with a line drive off the bat of Eduardo Nunez. We'll get a $6 value for $5 when you ask for a grouper from the Florida Lottery. With so many life changing prizes, get your group ready. The Florida Lottery, it's your ticket. Claim it. Must be 18 or older to play. Play responsibly. Well, Jay Coderizzi out of the game. Four innings plus four hits. He gave up one run. Unearned as it turned out, he struck out two, walked two, and leaves after being struck by that line drive. You know, earlier in the game, Moreland hit that line drive right back to the mound. He caught that one, had no chance on this one. And Dan Jennings will take over on the hill for the Rays with Ben and due up. So we'll absolutely hope for the best after Jake was hit on the right foot by that line drive and I think as you mentioned too, the other thing you worry about that that's his push off foot. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I mean the less you have to see is stuff like that the better that ball you know Eduardo Nunez was right on top of that offering and line that ball with authority coming back through the box and you know you're 60 feet six inches away when you're standing on the rubber when you after you deliver the baseball you're a lot closer than that and that ball hit him about as square as it could have and you hope that somehow some way that shoe absorbs some of that force because it sounded horrible. Well in a way I mean we're glad it hit the shoe and the sound of that was not at all in any way a good sound. But the fact that it hit the shoe makes you a little more optimistic on that. So let's wait and see and all hope for the best. Here's Ben Intendi who has singled and doubled and has scored the only run of this game so far. Yes, aboard with nobody out. There's a fastball for a strike down around the knees. Single and a double for Ben Intendi with a stolen base and the run scored. Been a good night already for him. Betts next, then Ramirez. Pitch wide. First, Nunez back in. Base hit the other way. And that pushes Nunez up to second. And Benintendi is three for three tonight. Yeah, we talked about a Dwayne coming in how hot he was and when you hang in there against a tough lefty like Jennings and to have that ability to be able to hit the ball the other way. That's what that's what shows you really and for a young hitter. Yeah he has uh, such presence and balance up there. You see how he lets that ball travel into the zone trust his swing trust his hands doesn't get antsy. 
and just pops that ball the other way and hits it hard enough that no one's got to play on it. Already a classic swing. And, and that's how he came as advertised. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody on the Boston side of things is, is surprised at all. But when you see a young hitter with an advanced approach, it really stands out. A 1 0 count to Mookie Betts. Now a 1 and 1. Rays have been out hit 5 1 and they trail 1 nothing. A threat here in the fifth by Boston. And that's strike two. Hanley Ramirez, the on deck man. Right back through the middle, dodged by Jennings. Here comes Nunez to score. Throw to third, not going to be in time. And back to second, Betts moves into scoring position. An RBI single makes it two to nothing. And Smith went to third, and Betts moves up on that throw. And perhaps absolutely an ill advised throw there because there was no way that you were going to get Ben and but Malik Smith looking to try to make a play here. Mookie Betts stays inside that ball, lines it right back through the box. It was a good job of hitting. And then Malik Smith comes in, no play at the plate, but he goes aggressively to third. You can see Ben Attendee's going to be in there easily. And then Evan Longoria has got to eat it because Mookie Betts glides into second. Now here with nobody out. Both runners in scoring position for Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez 0 for 2. And there's ball one. Misses down with a fastball. 2 and 0. Jennings worked two thirds of an inning in Sunday's game. Facing his third hitter right now. Did not get that pitch. He's behind in the count, three and zero. Oh. And now they're going to go ahead and put him on. So Ramirez will be walked. With Moreland coming up, the left-handed bat, bases loaded, nobody out, and Jim Hickey heads to the mound. So the Rays. Avoid pitching to Ramirez after falling behind him, and they set up the force at any base now. And that's what they're out there talking right now. Jim Hickey going over with Dan Jennings and this infield, how they're going to attack him and how they want this played. Obviously, first and foremost, cut that runner off at the plate. Anything on the ground? Well, there's Mitch Moreland. Well, you can see right there in those stats. Two for nine, does not have a home run, but yet has nine driven in. And that shows you that Mitch Moreland has the ability to get that ball elevated to knock in those nine runs on just two hits. Get some sacrifice flies in there. And this one gets by Ramos, and a run is going to score. 
So after giving up the intentional walk to load him to set up the force play that goes away and a run scores. A wild pitch charge to Jennings. Boy Ramos is set up middle in and that ball down in a way he get a wild pitch there but that's a ball that also could have been handled could have gone either way really. Now it's second and third the infield up. And there's a strike so the Red Sox with two runs in they're going to change that now to a pass ball. They may have heard you. The ground ball right to Enchimaria. Hold the runner at third and get the out at first. Moreland retired. So that's the first out as the Rays try to limit the damage. Yeah, if you could keep this at a three run deficit, okay. Not ideal, but certainly better than four or five. And that ball right on the ground to Echevarria, making sure that Bet stays put. Well, Bogarts has intentionally walked, and the Rays will try this again, setting up the double play possibility with the intentional walk. And the hitter is Brock Holt. And again, a ball in the dirt down the line. Here comes another run. Betts scores standing up. So twice the Rays have tried that and it has faltered both times. A wild pitch this time. A pass ball before. Boy that ball badly yanked and you see Ramos again was set up in and Dan Jennings just yanks that ball well across the plate into the dirt. And there's nothing Ramos could do there. Pitch is down 2 and 0. Oh. Well, the run in the third was unearned. They got an earned run here, the first run of this inning. Now a pass ball on a wild pitch factors in. It's a 4 0 game. There's a strike. Two runs charged to Odorizzi, one earned. And the other two here to Jennings coming on. And it's tap foul, two and two. Two strikes, minutes second and third. And a chopper that's over Jennings' head. Miller fields and he's running straight at Ramirez. He gets the tag there. And the Red Sox runners will advance to second and third. Miller aggressively in on that one and wound up making the play himself. He did. And, and Hanley Ramirez, you know, I mean, either go or don't. Either go or don't. And he reads that ball past the pitcher, and now you're stuck in no man's land. So Brad Miller made the, the, the smart play, the only play. Once that ball got over the head, I, it was too much of an aggressive charge there by Brad Miller that he was going to be able to score on reading that. And initially didn't read that. If you read that getting over the head of the pitcher, you, you go. You bust it right now. And he waited, hesitated. That allowed Brad Miller to be able to make that play. Sandy Leon now two men in scoring position Leon comes out swinging fouling the fastball away for a strike a three run fifth three hits a couple of intentional walks a pass ball a wild pitch three runs have scored men at second and third two outs in the 0 1 Leon fouls it. 
O2. Leon, the eighth man to hit in this inning. Pitch is down. One ball, two strikes. A three run frame. And a four nothing game here in the fifth. And sloppy. Yep. It just got really sloppy here in the fifth inning for the Rays. Line drive, base hit into left, one hop. Dickerson up with it. One run is scored. The throw is not going to be in time. Bogarts and Holt both score on the base hit by Leon. The Red Sox breaking it open in the fifth inning with a five run frame. Boy, Leon has been something with men in scoring position over 300 on the year. And drives in two with that hit. Boy, he circled that fastball in, got around it, and laced it out to left field. And running on contact, Brock Holt going to challenge Corey Dickerson. And he's able to get in just ahead of the throw. And, and Boston's taking control. Bradley chops it. Jennings fires to first to retire the side. But nine men come to the plate for Boston. The Red Sox score five and lead six nothing. Fox Sports Sound is brought to you by your Southern Chevy dealers. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Up top half of the fifth for the Rays. Five runs scoring for Boston. On three hits, a wild pitch, a pass ball. And the Rays down. As Trevor Plouffe comes in to hit in the bottom of the fifth. Wilson Ramos will hit next and then Malik Smith against Rick Porcello. Well it is high time to get to work. Rick Porcello has cruised through the first four innings giving up just the one hit. Well it has to turn sooner or later this offense. The Rays have now scored two runs in 42 innings. I think it is now. Well, and this is where it starts to become mental. Guys putting a lot of pressure on themselves, maybe trying to do a little bit too much, gripping that bat a little bit tight, getting a little bit long or big with the swing. Loop behind 0 2. He 
because this is this is one of those stretches that we've not seen from this offense obviously all season long. They've been consistently productive. The threat of the long ball with about each and every guy in the lineup. But they've been handcuffed here since they've gotten home. Plouffe is out on strikes. Nothing against Porcello since that first inning threat. Five strikeouts by the Boston right hander. Well the thing too is is you're right nothing against him. He's just making it look too easy. You know these at bats they're quick they're painless and you move on to the next guy and that's not typically the way the Rays offense work works. They battle you. They battle you hard. They put good at bats on you. And it's been difficult. Ramos fouls it out of play for a strike. Almost popped to first. His first time up. It's Brad Boxberger up in the bullpen. Oh, 2 fouled straight back. Cut the miss. Ramos out on strikes. Back to back strikeouts. Fastball right by him. That's that's at 90. That, right by him. Yeah, and, and this is what I mean. I mean, if you look at the last two at bats, it's just too easy for Trevor Plouffe, and that is not the Rays offense. Or excuse me, too easy for Rick Porcello from with Plouffe and Ramos. Yep. And it's just, you know, quick three, four pitch ABs and moving right along. And that is not what we've seen from this O all season. Malik Smith. He looks at a first pitch strike. And now he's down 0 2. Breaking ball, the curveball right there. Eight for eight. Strike three called, so he strikes out the side on nine pitches right there. Blue swinging, Ramos swinging, and Smith looking. So an immaculate inning here for Marcelo. Nine pitches. Inning. Boston with a run in the third and five runs in the fifth inning. The Rays set down an order in the bottom of the fifth. There you are, the immaculate inning for Rick Porcello. 
Yeah, front door little slider. The fastball elevated, then the fastball in to close out Malik Smith. And well, we, we, we said it during the first hitter of that AB, how easy Rick Porcello has made it look. And that inning, I guess, just sums it right up. Yeah, it was not, uh, not pleasant from the Rays' point of view and very easy from Porcello's perspective. And here is Brad Boxberger, pitcher number three, Oda Rizzi, Jennings, and now Boxberger. Brad will be facing the top of the order. Eduardo Nunez, this will be his fourth plate appearance. He's two for three, two singles, and two runs scored. The pitch is a strike. Boston trying to win its eighth game in a row, averaging six runs a game, and they have six on the board tonight. Tindy and Betts will follow Nunez. Out of play up the right side. And it's one and two. Boxberger last work last Thursday against Houston. It's two innings and struck out three. And he gets a call third strike here to open the sixth inning. MLB.tv Premium lets you watch every out of market regular season game live on over 400 supported devices. Plus, get a free subscription to AdBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Benintendi has a three hit night going. It's a single, double, and single. Two runs scored. There's a head in the count here in the sixth. High fly ball into left. Dickerson makes the catch on this one. Two up, two down. And Mookie Betts. Who scored in their five run fifth hits in the sixth inning. The Yankees lead the Blue Jays six to three. Good game in the fifth inning. Which is down to Betts one and oh. Bottom of the fifth in Toronto. Big cut and a miss by Betts. Pitch a little movement away there from him. Puts the ball down two and one. The Rockies beat the Indians in 12 innings, three to two in Cleveland. Cleveland will be coming in next. Two with a foul ball back into the screen. You know what? And, and as far as the way that it's going to go for this Rays offense, it's not going to get much easier. No, okay. it doesn't against that rotation. You're going to see Danny Salazar, who's been throwing the ball well uh, since coming back to the big club. Carlos Carrasco can take over a ball game. Corey Kluber, you're going to see him on Sunday. Yeah, so here's the matchup. Yep. 
and you know don't, don't rest on Mike Clevenger either. They, these guys can all throw the baseball and they can all take over a game if they're on. So the Rays offense is still going to have work to do. And we just haven't seen a stretch like this all season long. This is an offense that comes into games very well prepared and if you know starting pitchers are not sharp in the early going the, the Rays make them pay for it more times than not. But it's been a tough go. 3 2 is lifted into shallow center. Miller out, Smith in, and Smith makes the catch. There's a 1 2 3 inning. Bottom of the six coming up, 6 0. Of the sixth inning, the Rays have run up against Rick Porcello, who has shut them down after they threatened in the first. Yeah, he, he has got his legs underneath him here as the game has moved on, and nothing came easier than that fifth inning, the immaculate inning, three punch outs on nine pitches. But he has moved the ball around the strike zone, used all of his pitches, some slow curve balls. Elevated fastballs. He's worked down occasionally, and it right now is in complete control of this game. He's given up just the one hit, one walk, seven punches. Well, we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and here's something about immaculate innings. How about this? We had one by Alvarado here the other night. It's Echeverria fouls it, strike one, 88. 88 immaculate innings in MLB history. And we've had two here in a five game spread. That's, That's the nature of this game. I, isn't it the truth? <laughs> stuff that you, you don't ever see. Yeah. I mean, 88 times in the history of this game. I mean, think about that. Go back over the history again. That's fewer than once a year. Yeah. And we've seen it two times within the week. Mm -hmm. Homestand. Yep. We've had eight this year. 88 in the history of the game. Eight this year. Red Sox have had two now. I know we're not surprised that Craig Kimbrell could do that, and he, he did that against Milwaukee in May. There's a long drive back into left, towering drive. Ben intended going to run out of room. And a home run for an 80 Echeverria. Echeverria against the Rays on the board. Boy, the Rays are looking for anything to spark this offense. And Echeverria hits a towering fly ball, dropping it into the seats and left. Well, he got a ball hanging up out over the plate and got an airborne. Good swing. A little backspin to it. Ben Nintendi. Ran out of room, and we'll see if the Rays can build off of that. 
There is the breaking ball. It's just a spinner in the middle of the plate. Those get crushed. And that one, no different. Well, Echeverria's first home run in a Rays uniform now chopped down to first. Moreland is out unassisted. Echeverria had hit one in the 20 games he played in the National League this year, and now one. For the Rays, and the Rays are on the board. Here's a strike thrown to Brad Miller. See action in the Rays bullpen. Seashack up. Brasello had a streak of 19 consecutive strikes going until the uh, second pitch to Echeverria. And Echeverria hit the 1 2 pitch out. And Dickerson went out on the first pitch. Now it's 1 and 2 to Miller. So Porcello just pumping strikes. There's a shot deep into right center field. And this one is out of here. Home run for Brad Miller. He hits a fastball out. His fifth home run of the year. And his fifth career home run off Rick Porcello. And the Rays have two runs on the board here in the sixth. Boy, let's hope this is indeed the start of something for this offense. Porcello prone to the home run ball. And the Rays trying to climb back into this game one shot at a time. Went to the well one too many times right here. Fastball down and in. And Brad Miller, who put a great swing on a pitch up and away earlier in the game, comes down and in now and puts this one out of the yard. And he knew it. Here's Evan Longoria. And the breaking ball just floats in there high. One ball, no strikes. And you wonder how much longer John Farrell's going to go before he fires up his bullpen. Rays, they have that ability to climb back in quickly with the power that they have in their lineup. We've already seen that. Longoria with a couple of career home runs off Porcello, up 2 and 0 in the count. Now it's 3 and nothing. Logan Morrison is on deck. Morrison hit the grand slam earlier this year off Porcello. Yeah, th th this could this could get away from him in a hurry. There's a strike. Three and one. And strike two called. Solo back to the full count now. He walked Longoria in the first, having skied to center in the fourth. 3 2 popped up. Leon after down the line from third. Nunez, a fair ball, and he makes the catch. Two gone. It's a big out for Barcelo. Boy, if Longoria gets aboard and Morrison comes up there, this thing could turn in a hurry. Still could, but boy, there was a big at bat. Yeah, he, he came back with three really good pitches, two fastballs, and then that little front door has that cutter look, slider, whatever you want to call it. Got him out in front. Logan Morrison swings and sends a fly ball into right. Betts makes the catch. And the Rays are out in the six, but they're on the board. Solo home runs, the leadoff home run from Adani Echeverria to left. And then Brad Miller 
with a home run into right center at the end of six it's six to Boston. The Wednesday Showdown is driven by GMC. At Tropicana Field, well, the Rays, who have really struggled to score runs, they've scored two runs in 43 innings before the solo home runs by Echeverria and Miller in the sixth inning put them on the board. We're going to go into the seventh inning with Steve Shisak, the new pitcher, pitcher number four for the Rays tonight. Well, he's on for the 29th time, and he has been absolutely fantastic here for the Rays in his short time with this bullpen. That opponent's average 157. He gives you deception, extreme sidearm angle. Gets great velocity out there, gets it up to 92. Sweeping breaking ball that he'll flip up there in the upper 70s, low 80s. He's got a lot to work with. Big cut and a miss. Ramirez. Well, you see these, especially right handed hitters, open quickly against C Shack and take big cuts. And that's where you make yourself vulnerable to the breaking ball moving away from you. You start to you start to fly open, and that's you know, we see that a lot with the lefty on left and staying buried in there. You've got to do that, whether it's right on right, this extreme arm angle, you've got to stay thinking up the middle and keep that front side locked in if it starts to leak you're done because all of a sudden here comes the breaking ball front side leaks you'll never reach it. One ball two strikes. And a cut and a miss. Chases this one and is out on strikes. Well, that's what happens. You, you just don't have a bat that's long enough. And Cshek a steady die to heaters to get ahead, and then here it comes. Number 18. Still amazing to watch that as it sweeps across the plate and then some. Starts off the plate in and winds up off the plate away. Not quite Kent to Colby or Dan Quisenberry, but extreme enough. Mitch Moreland fouls it, strike one. You really don't see the true submariners anymore. The guys were that, I mean, the, the hands are coming awfully close to hitting that mound before delivery. Did he go? Yes, he did. Pat Holberg down there getting involved, maybe for the first time since he was struck by that base hit back in the first. 
had that call and was right there with it. Stairs. A ball, two strikes. Count one and two. Moreland is hit by a pitch, and he'll head to first. Number two, Xander Bogarts. And there's that pitch taken off again, and Mitch Moreland had no chance to get out of the way. Catches him on his front foot. Tough way to reach base. Yeah, he really was helpless. You know, sometimes you get that back foot out of the way. I think that started to move. The front foot stayed put and was hit. Now a ground ball is short at Maria. Miller one, Pluth two. Bogarts grounds into a 6 4 3 double play. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Steven Souza Jr. coming in to lead off. It's a 6 2 contest. Fox Sports Sound is brought to you by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers and by GMC. We are professional grade. Tropicana Field. Braves with three shots left, down six to two to Rick Marcello and the Red Sox. Steven Suzy Jr. will lead off. Number Fluke do next, and then Wilson Ramos. The Rays finally got on the board with a couple home runs in the sixth. Seems a junior and struck out at a fly ball to right. Takes a strike curveball to start him. This is just off the plate and down a little bit. You know, that's one pitch that Tony Randazzo, that pitch down. Romo busy in the bullpen. He's not really fond of that pitch as a strike. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Why, why would you like that <laughs> pitch as a strike? You know, he's we've seen him maybe widen the plate a little bit, calling the high strike. That's been the theme of the, the home state. It has been. It's been you widen it. Up, you're good. You don't like that. There's a base hit. Fastball line right back into center field. Lead off man on. Yeah, and that's one of those things, too. You, you've heard the rumblings about getting rid of the low strike. You yep. almost wonder if these guys are starting to put it into practice already. Yep. I'm trying to get a jump on things. <laughs> Stay one step ahead. 
How about that? Rays. I'll tell you what, this game has a chance to get really tight really quick. You can finally see some stirring in that Boston bullpen. Trevor Plouffe. Pitch is down to him. Looking for his first hit tonight. Fouls it back. One and one. It's Matt Barnes, hard throwing right hander, loosening in the bullpen for Boston. Fouled right back. Fastball in the upper 80s in the upper part of the zone. Blue fouls it. He lays off that. Fastball up this time, too high. Two and two. He's gotten him up there a couple of times in this ball game, trying to exploit the upper reaches of the strike zone and then beyond. Seen him pitch up there a lot here in this ball game. Good take. Curveball there, and it's three and two. Got a chance to get another base runner here. You're, you're getting really close. Rays have started to figure out Porcello. Souza Jr. first, 3 2 count to Plouffe. Wilson Ramos on deck. It's foul right back. And with a fastball up a bit. We'll see another 3 2 pitch. Count just over 80 and 71 through six. I mean, Purcello through five had only 55 pitches. And there's ball four. And the first two men are on. Two on, nobody out, and the Rays trying to build a little inning here in the seventh. Let's check in with Alex now for an update. Alex? Hi there, Dwayne. Yes, well, good news from inside the Rays clubhouse. It turns out tonight starter right-hander Jake Odorizzi has a right foot contusion, and x-rays are negative. They now have listed the righty as day today. Dwayne? Yeah, Alex, that's great news. It was uh, very concerning to see him, number one, struck on the outside of that right foot. It did not look good at the time. And so we'll hope for the best and that's good news to begin with. Call to the bullpen for Boston brought to you by the Florida Lottery.
Rays trying to build an inning, putting the first two men on at the bottom of the seventh. Hit a six dollar value for five dollars when you ask for a grouper from the Florida Lottery with so many life changing prizes. Get your group ready. The Florida Lottery, it's your ticket. Claim it. Must be 18 or older to play. Play responsibly. A little over 80 pitches, 82 for Rick Porcello. Leaves with a couple of men on. He's allowed two runs, a couple of walks, four hits, seven strikeouts. And he gives way to Matt Barnes. Well, Matt Barnes, the right hander for the Boston Red Sox, his 53rd game. Got a lot of decisions there. ERA 3.33, opponents average 195, a lot of strikeouts, but also has a tendency and from time to time can get wild. Four and two thirds against the Rays. He's walked six on the season. Wilson Ramos. And a ground ball sharply hit short. Bogart's second one over to first for the double play. Susan Jr. goes to third. And on the first pitch, Ramos hits into a 6 4 3 double play. Oh, that'll take the air out of it. Oh, Buzzkill. Wilson Ramos hit that ball hard too and it forced Bogarts to go down and backhand. This ball was raked, but it was right at him. Some nice glove work there by Bogarts and well, unfortunate. A sharply hit ball, but a double play. Here's Malik Smith. There's a fastball taken for a strike. Malik's 0 for 2 tonight. Seven game hitting streak come to an end, and since then he's 0 for 12. One and one. of his release point. He's a guy that comes closer to over the top, has a good four seam fastball that he'll ride up in the zone. And what's going to play well off of that? A good curveball spun tightly. And right there, Malik Smith just could not hold up on it. Going to go right back to it all sit right here. End of the dirt. So the count is 2-2. Two -two. have an 0 for 27 streak with men in scoring position current Smith up here with Souza at third base and a little tapper back to the hill grab by Barnes and he underhands the toss to first no runs ahead the man left on to the eighth 6 2.
the Wednesday showdown and driven by GMC. Boston threatened early. They broke through for five in the fifth inning. Jake Odorizzi left after being struck on the outside of the right foot by a line drive off the bat of Eduardo Nunez. And the Rays managed to get a couple of runs on the board in the sixth. Homers by Echeverria and Miller. They threatened in the seventh. We go to the eighth. Sergio Romo is pitcher number five for the Rays tonight. Well, keep it right here. That's the job for Sergio Romo as he goes up against the bottom part of this Boston lineup. Colt leads off the eighth, and that's going to be a fair ball, just fair down the left field line beyond the bullpen. Holt just served that one barely fair and has a leadoff double. Boy, that looked to be right off the end of the bat and hoping it was going to squib foul. That was just sliced. And look where this ball drops. Been that kind of night. Mm -hmm. So Holt with his second double of the year. Been in and off the DL and a couple of rehab assignments dealing with vertigo. He's at second now with a double. Leon misses that pitch. Just, just ran right toward him. And you talk about a sweeper. He swings at a pitch that ends up behind him. <laughs> Romo, a couple different versions of this slider. This thing take off where it's caught behind that left leg. It's one and one. Nothing doing back at second. Well, the Red Sox runs have come on an RBI base hit by Betts, an error by Odorizzi, a pass ball, a wild pitch, and a base hit by Leon driving in two runs. Grounds it to the right side. Romo's going to have to cover tough play, and the toss is behind Romo. A run will score and Leon winds up at second base. Well Plouffe ran a long way to his right to come up with that ball and trying to feed it to Romo through the ball behind him. Yeah you're trying to you're, you're moving to your right and then trying to lead a pitcher throwing back across your body and just not able to do it and it, it, it has been a sloppy night here for the Rays and not the kind of night you want to see after working on fundamentals before the game today. You see that trying to you're trying to get that out over your front left shoulder and lead Romo and that's a difficult throw to make. So a run scores on the error to make it seven to two. Bradley Jr. pops it up foul and that's headed out of play for a strike. Bradley Jr., the only member of this Boston lineup not to reach base tonight. He struck out twice and gone out pitcher first. He chops it to the right side, backhanded by Miller. Throw to Plouffe in time. Over to third goes Leon. And Bradley is the first out. So a man in third and the top of the order Eduardo Nunez making his way to the plate.
away from Nunez who misses it. Former teammates. With the Giants. Rays bring that infield up looking to. Keep it here at five. Well, these two faced each other last night. And Nunez hit a fly ball, hit into a double play as it turned out on a fly ball to left. You don't see that every day. 7 4 3. That's when Bradley Jr. was well on his way to third when the catch was made. He was doubled off first. Now it's two balls and a strike the count. Well, he'd like to do the same thing. Get the ball airborne, get the ball into the outfield, and bring Leon home. Infield up. And this one skips by Ramos, and another run will score. And it's now 8 to 2. The Red Sox get those two runs back, and it has not been a pretty night for the Rays that's going to be scored a wild pitch Boy, a couple of wild pitches a pass ball an error. What, what do you think is going through the mind of Kevin Cash right now yeah it's tough none of it's pretty he has a club that's 0 for 28 with men in scoring position and things have gotten very sloppy here tonight So two runs have scored. One reached on an error and scored on a wild pitch. And that is strike three call. Nunez on his way to first. And he is called out on strikes and walks slowly back toward the dugout. Now Andrew Benintendi can understand the, the <laughs> slow stroll. <laughs> Not very happy with that call. Now the range was on slow simmer right there. <laughs> A lot of people in this building that are not very happy right now. That's exactly right. Benintendi takes it wide. An eight two ball game now. Boston scored an unearned run in the third. They scored five in the fifth inning, aided by a wild pitch and a pass ball. We have an error and a wild pitch here in the eight, contributing to the Boston offense. They've added two runs, two outs with the bases empty, and the count is now three and one. He bets on deck. Full count.
popped up. Foul ball. That's Longoria after it. Of the coaching box to retire the side. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Eight to Boston. It's unlimited baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile. The Cleveland Indians come to town tomorrow, beginning a four-game series. They're atop the American League Central. Corey Kluber with 10 wins. We'll see him in the Sunday game, and you know Austin Pruitt will draw that pitching assignment against Kluber. And Jose Ramirez, you talk about the model of consistency, hitting 312, and he's around that number whether he's facing right handed pitching left handed pitching whether he's doing it in his home ballpark or any road ballpark he is the model of consistency Jose Ramirez well he's been consistent for that club the last couple of seasons went to the all star game has really really stepped up and, and forced Terry Francona's hand got to got to play him got to yeah. keep him in there he's one of the most protective guys on that team and unless you're playing against him you're a big fan of this guy, the way he plays and his production. Brandon Workman, the new pitcher, and he throws a fastball by Danny Echevarria to begin the bottom of the eighth. Two runs for the Red Sox in the top of the inning. One earned, one hit, and one error. Echevarria homered in the sixth, and he tried to uppercut that fastball and missed it. Down 0-2. That's Ravaria's first home run for the Rays, his second home run for the year. The pitch is wide. <laughs> two and two. A strike called just above the knees. One gone in the eighth. Here's what's coming up tomorrow on Ray Five, the pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. The left hander Blake Snell back. We'll hear from him. He'll make the start. And Arrestes will break down the Indian slugger Edwin Encarnacion. Sion comes in here with 22 home runs. Corey Dickerson, one ball, no strikes. The count is Corey 
searches for his first hit of the game. We're in the bottom of the eighth. And it's one and one. One out, base is empty. Two and one. On deck is Brad Miller. It's fouled right back to two workmen. Back up with the Red Sox for his third stint this year. Recalled in the middle of July. It doesn't have a short arm action. You see the ball come out of the glove. There's not a, a true arm swing. He kind of keeps things short, adds to a little bit of, of deception, the fastball, the breaking ball. And it's fielded by Rocco Baldelli and a toss to a fan. And he joins uh, the best bullpen. In fact, as far as ERA goes in Major League Baseball, The ability to shorten games, of course, the Red Sox went out and picked up Addison Reed before the, the trading deadline to, to add a little bit of length to that bullpen, or at least make it a little bit thicker there at the back end. And a foul ball, so Dickerson is still alive. You know, when you think about what this bullpen is missing, you know, Tyler Thornburg, they, they traded, made a trade, the Travis Shaw trade. Yep. We just saw in town here with Milwaukee. He's not pitched for this team. Carson Smith, another big pickup for the bullpen. I think that was even last year. The pop up foul ball, and that's straight back out of play. And yet, here they are with the best numbers in the game. They ring up a lot of strikeouts. And they're doing what a lot of clubs in the East. It said they have to do, and that is string some wins together, and they hit that stretch here. We talk about some guys that can get the ball up there with some velocity. You just had a, a shot of four of them there sitting out in that pen. Bogarts takes care of Dickerson's pop up. Two gone. And Workman's in here. Pitching with a six run lead. You know, he'd been back and forth over the last couple of years with Boston, as we mentioned, third time this year. And he just went down to Triple A and put together great numbers down there. His earned on average was about one and a half there. And here's Miller lifting a towering shot into right, but a lot of room for Betts, who makes the catch. And the Rays are up and down in order in the eighth to the ninth we go. 8-2 Boston.
time for our post-game show on Fox Sports Sun, presented by W.B. Mason. We'll have interviews from inside the clubhouse, as well as hear from Rays manager Kevin Cash. And also, you don't want to miss a feature as the Rays has, have teamed up with the organization CASA, which is the largest shelter in the state of Florida, as they help families who are troubled by domestic abuse and violence. Dwayne. Been a long night for the Rays and Kevin Cash. We'll get an update on Jay Coder Rizzi on Rays Live the post game, so stay with us for that. We'll hear from Kevin Cash and Alex will secure interviews from the clubhouse. Monkey Betts sends it into short left center and racing in is Malik Smith to make the catch. So Betts is the first out here in the ninth inning is Sergio Romo is back out there for another inning of work. And now it will be Hanley Ramirez who's intentionally walked in their five run fifth. Pitch is a strike. It's Alex Colome up in the bullpen. It's been a while since he's been in a game. And now an 0-2 count. Joe Kelly up in the bullpen for the Red Sox. Well. It holds it two strikes on the foul ball. Stairs. So it's one and two. And a base hit. Center field. Ramirez has his first hit tonight. A one out single. Join us for a retro weekend when the Rays played the Indians. Saturday, the first 15,000 fans got a mystery retro replica jersey presented by GTE Financial. And on Sunday, kids 14 and under get a pair of retro socks presented by Geico. Visit Rays.com today. Mitch Moreland. The pitch is down, 1 0. Moreland hit by a pitch in the seventh. Can out of play. One and one. And the Rays will have the Cleveland Indians coming in, and VA they're adding to their offense. They they certainly are. It looks like they've reached a deal to uh, acquire Jay Bruce from the Mets. You know, they Michael Brantley just went down with a, with an ankle injury, mm -hmm. and in last night's game, 
And Lonnie Chisenhall, also part of their outfield, currently not able to answer the bell. The ground ball handled by Longoria, who steps on the bag and throws to first for the 5 3 double play. Bottom of the ninth coming, 8 2, Boston. During a home game, visit canestrikeout.com and obtain a printed home voucher to take to any Cane's furniture store within seven days and receive a coupon for a free Whopper sandwich combo meal from Burger King. Now, I hate to have to do this, Dwayne, but the key plays here tonight, and it really goes to the Rays defense. It was a sloppy night all around. And it started early. He had some wild pitches, had some pass balls, and things just just could not could not get him into order. He had this play right here, trying to lead the pitcher to the bag, and Trevor flew the ball a little bit wide there of Sergio Romo. Just an ugly, ugly night for the Rays. And certainly not something that they wanted. You know, this is the team that came out early today as a group, you know, to work on fundamentals and, and get themselves straight to try to you know, put a win on the board and get on a little bit of a roll and you really end up playing what looks like you know off the top of your head the sloppiest game of the year. Yeah I think you're right about that and that's the irony in this they. Put in the. Uh, extra effort. Before the game and things have not worked out nearly the way they had hoped here's Longoria. Taking a strike from Joe Kelly, who's the new pitcher for the Red Sox. Well, and you know what? Maybe it's a game like this that just you, you, you talk, bottom out. You just tick, and it ticks you off. Yeah. Okay. What do you got to lose now? Let's go. We're done. Yep. You know what I mean? Done out out here with all of this stuff, and uh, you, know, you just play with that chip on your shoulder, and that's the wonderful thing about this game, and also the unforgiving part about this game is there's no rest. You got to go back at it tomorrow and figure out a way. To get this thing done. And so maybe this is one of those games that really lights a fire under this team. You know they're perfectly capable of going out and ripping off a bunch of wins in a row and scoring some runs and shutting the opposition down. Well, that's what it's going to take if the Rays, you know, the, the Rays came into the day in a virtual tie for that second wild card spot. Well, you couldn't prove it by tonight's performance, but they have competed. Every day. And that's what it's going to take if this club is going to go anywhere in the postseason. You see, the Red Sox have put together a little streak here and they've grabbed the lead in the East. Ray's still in a position to do that. You've got 47 games left after this one. But it's going to take a turnaround and a little run like that. And whoever does that, and there are a number of teams in the same position the Rays are in. There are a number of teams trying to do the same thing. Yeah. And that's the question. Can the Rays do it or not? And for a long time, the Rays and, and Kevin Cash in the front office have 
And I think fans have felt as if the Rays could do that. And so we'll see. I think you still feel that they have that run in them. And if they do, then it could be uh, really interesting over the next almost two months. All the ingredients are there. Yeah. You, we, we talked about the, the starting pitching run here the last four or five ball games. Those guys are are capable. The new look bullpen uh, has done the job. They're capable of shit. Right now it's been a, a problem with the offense. This is a one little stretch. This is a week out of a full four and a half months where they've really, really struggled. But overall, a lot of power and it's a more dynamic offense that we've seen in the past. They just need to get it going. And defensively tonight, you know, and with you're just sloppy, just sloppy. And that, that's been something that, that has, you know, plagued this team at different points of this season that they're going to have to continue to work on and, and clean up. But you know that they're capable. It's just a matter of, of putting it into practice and getting it done. And I think that's what everybody, including the guys downstairs, are looking for. Two and two now to Morrison. And I think you're right about the, you can't take this last stretch of a week or so and make that define you because they haven't been that kind of team. And you expect going forward that they'll reflect the team that we saw before this stretch and that they have that run in them and it remains to be seen and remains to accomplish that that's the challenge in front of them every team has some ugly stretches every team out there except maybe the Dodgers could point to a stretch yeah. where things have just been ugly it just happens to be that that's where the Rays are right now I will tell you this they could be a lot worse off if teams around them were winning more. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're still right there, even though this has not been pretty to watch, and it's going to come to an end sooner rather than later, you hope. 3 2 count here to Logan Morrison. And he fouls it back. Morrison just reinstated from the disabled list last Saturday. He had a hamstring issue. Dating back to the middle of July. And a full count to Morrison. And by the way, that's the last that I have reflecting gotcha. on this little stretch. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and check out here. A okay. couple of base runners and the Rays inch back, tap me on the shoulder, <laughs> and uh, I'll get right back at it. Okay, it's been, uh, it's been great here with you this evening. Morrison has struck out for the second out in the ninth and uh, we're looking forward to better things in the coming days and I'm sure the Rays would like to have that start tomorrow. Yep. Great job and uh, it'll be at 630 by the way our coverage coverage begins 630 tomorrow for the opening game of that series. I'll be in there uh, a few hours earlier than that with a new highlighter. My highlighter ran out today. So did mine. Yep. I, I, you know, I, I went to some backups that I had. I, I see you see you got a pile of them. Yeah. Right there. You're hoarding. <laughs> You're hoarding <laughs> Sharpies. Susie Jr. founds it out of play. Well, they I just happen to have those in the corner somewhere. I think they've been on the floor in the corner. I'm reduced to that. Well, I don't I have no backups. It's been a long time since I've been on the floor in the corner, but <laughs> that's where the Sharpies were. Last road Somehow trip they got me. there. Last road trip. <laughs> A strike the count to Susan Jr. This one is down one and one. Yeah, it better get better <laughs> for our sake. It better get better. And you have to believe that it will. And you know, you feel for Kevin Cash right now. I mean, number one, he's, he's a good guy and he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He's doing all the right things. And to have the last little stretch here fall out the way it has, it, it's difficult. And you. You feel for a guy like that and the whole coaching staff too. the whole coaching and, and the players. Yeah, because these guys know that they're better than this. Yeah, absolutely. And you just got to dig deep and, and find a way to crawl out. That's it. That's it. No one's going to help you out. Yep. You, you're going to have to crawl out. One two round ball down to third pick there by Nunez and that is the ball game. Orland with a scoop at first and the Red Sox beat the Rays tonight. It's an 8 2 final. Marcelo gets the win. Oda Rizzi takes the loss.
Brian Anderson and Alex Cordry. Dwayne Stats, hope you've enjoyed the telecast about the outcome. 8 2 final. Braves live the postgame presented by W.B. Mason comes your way next.